Nearly several hundred users travel the Minuteman Bikeway in Arlington each day, a growing amount since its opening in 1992. But long before cyclists pedaled their two wheels, there was the Iron Horse. It was a major event every afternoon when that train came by. Clickety-clack, clickety-clack, the old-fashioned sound of a train coming down a railroad track was a sound you could hear for a half a mile. So uh, it, was, it was a really exciting sound. Tra trains were a big deal. It was about big iron. It was about power. That power has had a lasting impression on Steve Wenzel from when he lived across from the tracks as a young boy on Summer Street in the late 1940s and early 50s. That show of American strength capturing Stuart Brorson's attention too. Because they're large and very picturesque machines, they look like a huge beast of some sort, which is why they were called iron horses, because it really looks like they're moving pieces, like there are legs or something moving. Pointing out the physical pieces left from that magical time. So those are there to capture the wheels from rolling. The president of the Arlington Historical Society says Arlington, known as West Cambridge during the start of the railroad, couldn't escape the excitement spreading across America. Railroad fever. In the 1830s, the whole country was caught up in railroad fever. And it was the prospect of making money that had entrepreneurs fired up to bring in the first steam engines in 1845, coming from Charlestown through current Arlington to Lexington. Any town that wanted to have an economy and participate in the modern era needed to have a railroad going to it so that goods could be shipped in and out, as well as passengers shipped in and out. Items such as coal, ice from Spy Pond, manure for the many farms in town, and a way for people to get to and from Boston. Somewhere in the middle 1800s, the, one of the railroads that purchased the Lexington and West Cambridge um, gave us tracks so that we could actually run our trains directly to North Station. There were three original train stations in Arlington. So there was Lake Street Station, there was Arlington Center Station, there was the Brattle Street Station, and those were the three that were built with the original railway, and then soon there came the um, Arlington Heights Station, which is where we are now, which would have been right there. None still stand today, but these old photographs showing how developers matched the largesse of the railroad to the grandiosity of the stations. Changes were afoot in the 1950s that made these tracks here at Whitmore Park in Arlington merely a decorative piece due to something else coming down the pike. This is the railroad going over a highway overpass. This is Route 128. Steam engines were phased out in the middle 1950s and so this photograph is, and it's sort of a, it's a premonition of what's going to happen to the railroad because there's the railroad, cars are soon going to take over everything and it's going to drive the railroad uh, business basically into the ground. But before that, track owners Boston and Lowell and then the MBTA tried to keep the line going, replacing steam engines with new so-called bud cars. These were self-propelled uh, diesel cars and they were supposed to sort of displace the dirty old steam engines with something new and modern as a way to compete against automobiles. It was a snowstorm in 1977 that literally put a stop to the trains. The T eventually pulling the last commuter cars out of service. The railroad era in Arlington came to an end. That is, until rail-to-trail enthusiasts and town planners convinced the state in 1992 that cycling was a form of transportation. And with several hundred using the Minuteman bikeway each day, this 172-year-old path is alive once again. A new destination and resource for the lives around it. Brenda Mahoney, Arlington Public News.